the BQH2 extruder. A lightweight, high temperature, direct drive extruder capable of some really cool things. We're going to install this on my Troxy Crux next. Hey everyone, welcome to the corner. It's me, Jeff. Glad to have you here. This time around, we're going to look at installing a H2 extruder from BQ onto our Troxy Crux here. So I have it installed already. I'm going to go through the steps with you in a minute. But the reason why I'm doing this is this is the original extruder. Well, one, it's almost twice as heavy, I would think. Two, if this extruder works for you, great. It was working great for me. But I did notice that when you look at it, it's actually just a throat. There's no heat sink or anything. And I had it clog on me a few times, had a few different issues. So I figured I might as well go ahead and upgrade to a, uh, a lighter extruder for this direct drive and try and get a lot more speed out of it. Now, I did try all metal hot ends because it's a Teflon throw. I even tried to experiment with a heat sink on it. I couldn't find quite the right size for the original one. So that led me to go to the BQ. Now, when I installed this, I wanted to make sure that I tried to keep as much of the original wiring as possible. So I kept the original fan. I kept both the original fans, actually. I just printed a small adapter that I found on Thingiverse for the cooling fan. I did have to change the thermostat, but I kept the heat block wiring for it. And I also had a problem with the stepper motor wire. I had to change that out. But I'm going to go through some of the steps and procedures with you right now. What I did was I modeled mounting brackets until I got a model I was happy with in order to mount it. And after that, I had to do some tuning. First, I had to do my E-steps, and then I had to do my, my stringing calibration. And here's just an example of before and after. So yes, it does take a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. All right. After I had everything calibrated, I wanted to uh, test. I did a quick tolerance test. And with a, the, the last three worked perfectly. The two was a little snug. The 1.5 and the one I had to force, but they do end up moving. So calibration with this is really good. I love these little dyno clips for chips. I did a quick little tolerance test on it. It seems to work just fine. And then somebody was asking me about if I lost any build volume. Okay, so this is a 175 by 175 cross. As you can see, that side, I just need to calibrate it over a hair. Then I did this Daredevil helmet print here. It looks like it came out pretty good. I did scale it down to fit the trunk seat. And as you can see from the top, I didn't use any supports. And that's kind of what you see here. I probably could have done another shell or two on here and that would have came out really good. But overall, it looks pretty decent. I did a big vase as well to test the build volume. And it turned out really good. There is a slight gap in here somewhere. You can't see it right now. Oh, right there. I don't know if you can see that, but I think that is purely because of the overhangs that it's doing, which are just insane, but it came out really good. And I did this Watchman Osman vase, vase, or Osmond um, bust. It looks pretty good as well. It did a really good job. Now then, about the board. So the reason why this video took so long is because this is my original Crocsy Crux board. And this has the well, they put the stamp right on it, so I will voice over what the uh, processor is. I had a slight blowout on this chip right over here. It could have been my fault. It could have been Tronxy's fault. They, um, because it was a testing unit, they weren't going to warranty it, so I had to buy a new one. So I bought that new one, and that's in there, but it's a different chip set. So 
the Marlin they originally sent me came with it. I wasn't able to adjust any of the EEPROM and Pronter face, so I had to wait for them to send me an updated version of Marlin as well for that. And I was finally able to adjust everything. So that is the reason why this video is so long. But as you can see, overall, it did do a really good job. So yeah, so here's the uh, BQ extruder done on my Tronxy Crux. Now, I'm just gonna go over a couple of notes right here that I have. Do it for the wiring. Just kind of follow your old wires back and make sure you plug them into the right spots and stuff. That's why I left the, the fans the same because I know Tronxy's are sometimes backwards with their wiring. That's why if you use this, this cooling fan here, I'll leave the links down below for all the mounts and the fans and the stuff that I got. I think I got them off of Thingiverse. You can just go down in the description and grab those if you want. This BQ extruder has the bimetal heat break, so I can do a whole bunch of different filament types. It will go up to 110 on the heat bed, and it'll go to 275 on the nozzle. So with the bimetal heat break, that allows me to print a few different materials than the original Tronxy, which had a, um, a Teflon tube inside the throat. So Pronter face for the offsets, you got M206 for the X, which was a little bit off. I think I went X7, and then you want to save that. E-steps, they recommend um, 932. I went higher than 932. I think I'm 1100 or so. So double check when you're doing your extrusion, you know, do your 100 mils. Check it, double check it, and then save everything with your M500. And that is about it. So to sum it up, the BQ H extruder here is gonna allow me to print various different materials at various different temperatures now, higher than I was able to do before, which will open up a brand new printing experience for this printer, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Big Tree Tech BQ. Seem to be putting out great products consistently now. I think that's awesome. So thumbs up to you guys. Tronxy, I'm gonna try and talk to you, see if we can figure out some different coding issues with the uh, firmware for this. So it's still a work in progress, but it does really good. It prints well. It's gonna print even better now, I have a feeling, with the uh, BQ extruder. So thanks a lot, guys. Links are down below. If you're cruising through the channel, give me a thumbs up. If you like my videos, Subscribe. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys next time.